The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning. Should both Valley Boys factions be allowed to compete in the Category A for Junkanoo? 177 million dollar project for Treasure Key. And the PLP under scrutiny over claims as it shifts its key campaign pledges. It's all straight ahead this morning. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Thursday, September 12th, 2024. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. In a moment, Laverne Gardner will be joining us. Also this morning, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness with Cancer with urologist Dr. Gregory Pinto, who has a big announcement to make this morning as well. You won't want to miss that. And then later in business, we're getting a preview of a new movie, a locally produced movie that is debuting in just a few days. We'll get the details about that and how that process went in business. That's all ahead. But first, it's time for The Overnight, the latest breaking news from while you're sleeping and the top national and international headlines this morning. In the overnight, the tension surrounding the split of the Valley Boys intensifying with the JCMP, the Junkanoo Corporation of Providence, announcing that despite the government's decision to award both factions with seat funding, only one, only the world-famous Valley Boys, will be competing in the A category for the upcoming Bay Street Parades. The way forward Valley Boys, which claim to have more than 80% of the original Valley Boys' support, has been placed in the F category for fun, Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture Mario Bolek said yesterday that the decision on which category each group performs in is ultimately up to the JCNP, but he noted that he would have opted for a different solution. He says he believes that in the long run it will be best to look at what's best for Junkanoo and understand that the Bahamian people come on Bay Street to see what's to see the best of the best perform. He said, quote, if it was my decision... I believe that both factions should have been given the opportunity to compete for a prize because what is there to win and what is there to lose? Bolex has a decision to award both groups based on an assessment of their potential. The hurricane ravaged Treasure Key Resort in Apico is set to be revitalized in a $177 million investment by Greenpoint Holdings LLC. The company says it hopes to not only revitalize the resort area, but also the entire Treasure Key community and allow Bahamians to invest in the project. Prime Minister Philip Davis explained yesterday during the signing of the Heads of Agreement for the development that Greenpoint has also committed to offer on-the-job training for construction workers and limit the number of foreign workers on the job. FNM Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands says Prime Minister Davis's backpedaling on the issue of campaign finance reform is, quote, pathetic and indicative of a wider approach to governance. Sands telling the Nassau Guardian that it was a promise in their blueprint for change, and, quote, it's pretty pathetic that they now so flippantly distance themselves from it. This administration has no sense of aspirational governance. It is all about holding on to power. This is all about having a good time. Last month, after Davis accused FNM leader Michael Pintard of accepting campaign funds from the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Pintard says he was willing 
to reveal his party's donors and challenged Davis to do the same. But when asked about it on Tuesday, the Prime Minister said he was not minded to disclose the list of PLP campaign donors unless those donors wished to be made public. Campaign finance legislation was a key promise in the PLP's campaign document, Blueprint for Change, however, last month. Foreign Affairs Minister and PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell says he doesn't believe there's an appetite for campaign finance reform in the country. This despite his telling the OAS, Organization of American States, in January that uh, the government was wor- ongoing, the work was ongoing to develop a legal framework to govern campaign finance. Inappropriate social media banter involving ninth grade students at Lifriki International School in Western New Providence led to possible safety concerns and involved photographs of weapons. That's all according to Assistant Commissioner of Police Chaswell Hanna. Hannah saying yesterday that the police received uh, on Tuesday information from school administrators of a possible safety concern involving some of the ninth grade students. He says that uh, they spoke to all the parties concerned, including parents and the students, the subject of the safety concern, and they're assisting the police with the investigation. He says that um, it was inappropriate social media banter, some of it involving Google searches for photographs of weapons, but there was no actual weapon, and at no time did a student bring any weapon to the campus or anything related to that. Overseas, Francine weakening today after striking Louisiana as a Category 2 hurricane that knocked out power to hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses and sent storm surge rushing into coastal communities, raising flood fears in New Orleans and beyond as drenching rains spread over the northern Gulf Coast of the United States. The tropical storm is forecast to be downgraded to a tropical depression as it turned northward over Mississippi. According to the National Hurricane Center, some four to six inches of rain possible in portions of Mississippi and neighboring states, warning of the potential threat of scattered flash flooding as far flung as Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, Alabama, Memphis, Tennessee, and Atlanta, Georgia. Francine slammed the Louisiana coast last night with one hour winds in coastal Terrebonne Parish, battering a fragile coastal region that hasn't fully recovered from a series of devastating hurricanes in 2020 and 2021, and then moved at a fast clip towards New Orleans, pounding the city with potential rains. There were no immediate reports of deaths or injuries. TV news broadcasts from coastal communities showed waves from nearby lakes, rivers, and gulf waters thrashing seawalls. Water poured into city streets and... uh, Oak and cypress trees leaned in the high winds. Some utility poles swayed back and forth. And nearly 200 people have died in Vietnam in the aftermath of Typhoon Yagi, and 128 are missing as flash floods and landslides take their toll. Vietnam's state media and a VN Express newspaper reporting that 199 people have died while more than 800 have been injured. In the capital, floodwaters from the Red River receded slightly, but many areas were still inundated with water neck high in some places. In Hanoi's Teho district, people waded through muddy brown water above their knees to make their way along one street, some still wearing their bicycle and motorcycle helmets after abandoning their vehicles along the way. A few paddled along the road in small boats as empty water bottles and styrofoam con- coolers and other debris drifted by one man pushing his motorcycle toward drier ground in an aluminum sloop. Residents started evacuating the area on Tuesday as the floodwaters rose and power and drinking water have been cut since Wednesday.
in sports, the men and women's championships in the new Providence Softball Association set as the semifinals wrapped up on Bankers Field at Blue Hills Complex this week. The teams are now playing hard with the hopes of winning the championships in the women's division. The R&B operators turned back to the Black Scorpions on Tuesday, winning 19-9. With the win, the operators took the best of five series, three games to one. Ramona Hanna got the win from the mound for the operators. In the men's division, the Cybertech Blue Marlins will battle this chance's mighty mitts in what promises to be a thrilling encounter. They will face each other in the best of seven series. Details in today's Guardian Sports section. And from the W Jones, the New York Liberty are on pace to tie the record for wins in a season by a club. They claim their second consecutive 30 win season this week, turning back the Dallas Wings 105 to 91. The Liberty could tie the women's national, well, the WNBA record for most wins in a season and wins in their final four games. They play the Stars in Arlington tonight, then go to face the Minnesota Lynx before finishing the regular season at Washington and home for Atlanta. The WNBA record of 34 regular season wins was set by the two-time defending champion Las Vegas Aces last year. Just the Aces and the Liberty have ever won 30 games in a WNBA regular season. That's sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather. Your first look at weather brought to you by Carnival Celebration Key and their job fair. Here's what's happening. We've got for the northern Bahamas, well, we've got trapped abundant moisture ahead of a frontal boundary station across central Florida. That's going to lead to persistent and occasionally widespread showers across portions of the northern islands throughout the day as the front gradually lifts northward. A weak high pressure system across the rest of the country will keep humid conditions and light winds in the forecast at least through tonight. So again, the uh, Northern Islands and the Northwest Bahamas will experience widely scattered showers for the majority of the day into Friday, just before a dry spell for the weekend. And a developing low pressure system may form along the front to the north of the islands by Saturday morning, increasing the rip current risk along Atlantic beaches by early next week. Increased rainfall chances back in uh, uh, for us, if by Monday, as a deepening upper-level trough over the eastern Gulf of Mexico will interact with tropical moisture. The advisory again for uh, portions of the country today, the central and southeast Bahamas, and uh, everyone's being advised to exercise caution outside, uh, limit outdoor activities. And there is a moderate risk of uh, localized flooding due to heavy and prolonged rainfall events for the northern and northwest Bahamas. So your forecast again for the extreme northern Bahamas, including Grand Bahama, cloudy to overcast today, 40 to 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon. For the northwest Bahamas, including New Providence, mostly cloudy, about a 20 to 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. For the central and southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy, partly sunny with cloudy intervals. Temperatures today, we're looking at highs, especially for the central and southeast Bahamas. In the low 90s, we might be in the upper 80s in the northern Bahamas as a result of the rain we might see today. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 77 Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. For the central southeast Bahamas, the heat index will make you feel like it's 102 Fahrenheit, 39 Celsius. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have an extended outlook coming up in just a bit. Your first look at weather brought to you by Carnival Celebration and their job fair. This Saturday, let your career set sail at the Carnival Celebration Key Job Fair. It'll be at Bahamar Convention Center from 1 to 5 p.m. 
Whether you're looking to manage, serve, or support, your perfect job is waiting right on the horizon at Celebration Key. Visit Celebration Key Grand Bahama on Facebook for more details. Again, the Celebration Key Job Fair this Saturday, 1 to 5 p.m. at Bahama Convention Center. You're listening to Morning Blend. When we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. Guardian Radio 96.9. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and car body fasteners, too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. Living with a neurological condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org slash Caribbean. Do you have uncontrollable debt? Are you ready to make that move to Fidelity Foyshore? These loans have a built-in savings plan that pays you unbeatable interest. Ask about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Fidelity, we're good for you. RBC. Life is full of twists, turns, and defining moments that create your own unique story. However your story unfolds, we're here to help guide you through it. From every big decision to every new adventure, RBC. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you. the immediate care you deserve at Doctors Hospital Urgent Care. When emergency strikes, trust our expert physicians for fast quality care. With extended hours and cutting edge medical technology, we're always ready to serve you. Don't wait or take risks with your health. Visit our urgent care suite at Doctors Hospital West on Blake Road for immediate, trusted, and best care. Are you tired of the same old 5K runs? Want something more? Then get ready for the Chick Charney Challenge City Run on September 28th, starting at Crypto Wild. Test your strength, stamina, and spirit. It takes all of you to dodge, climb, conquer obstacles as you race through the heart of the city. Lace up and get to the Chick Charney Challenge City Run. Register now on our website, chickcharneychurn.com, or on our social media pages. Brought to you by Kalina, Island Yogurt, Advantage Insurance, Art of Graphics, Crypto Wild, and Guardian Radio 96.9. Maybe it's time to explore your options. There's no harm in reviewing your mortgage arrangement and considering a better deal. CIBC Caribbean can help you narrow your search and decide. Caribbean, and enjoy a special interest rate and help towards your switching cost. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash inspired home for more information. Conditions apply. It's a new day. 
Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on guardiantalkradio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at Morning Blend 969 or Facebook.com slash Morning Blend 969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line, powered by BTC, 4224796. Standard text rate supply. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Joining me now, Laverne Gardner in Grand Bahama. Laverne, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you with us. I'm doing well. Hope you are as well. I am. Wonderful, wonderful. We've got a lot to talk about this morning. Um, uh, coming up, it, it is September. That means it's September. It's uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. A group that is trying to get um, uh, the awareness out to men to get their prostate exams. Today, we're going to be talking with doc- with Dr. Gregory Pinto, urologist, um, who is always here telling us about the um, the the desperate need for people to get tested, men to get tested. Um, and to keep up their prostate health. We're going to learn more about that today. Um, but he also has a big announcement to make. He's going to tell us all about that. You definitely don't want to miss that. What was that? I assume that sounds exciting. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm sure. It is, it is. And then later we're going to be uh, getting a preview of Look Up Child. It's a new movie that is premiering at Fusion Superplex next week. We'll get the details about that from the director, the writer, and one of the cast members. Looking forward to that. That's all ahead. But first, it's time to uh, talk about what's in the news. And in the news, Laverne, this saga is um, dragging on as long as a gap between the groups at a Junkanoo parade. I just don't understand. Uh, this is every day. It's getting wilder and wilder. Um, as we got off the air yesterday, it seemed like it was going to be um, no end in sight to the drama here. As you, we told you yesterday, the JCNP decided that only one group of the the Valley Boys, one of the two groups claiming to be the Valley Boys, will be allowed to r- rush in the A category. And the other, the newer one, hmm, will be uh, relegated, is that a good word, to the F category, which is a, for fun groups. And that is not sitting well with, with many, many, many people. Um, but we did get some clarity from the minister on the seed funding issue, which was confusing. And uh, we've got it all for you in this report from our Vonik Toot. Man, man, man. And a went and found- Minister of Youth Sports and Culture Mario Boleg has confirmed that both factions of the Valley Boys will each receive $30,000 in seed funding ahead of the major junk, arguing that members of both sides deserve to put on a show for Junkanoo fans. We will provide both with the seed funding of, of a group. Now, again, uh, we wasn't, and that was given not on the basis of whichever um, category they would have been placed. But as my belief and understanding that both of them has the capability to perform at the level of a category and that therefore seed funding will be given to them in that in that instance. This as he weighed in on a decision by the Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence to place the world famous Valley Boys in the A category and the way forward in the F category as a fun group. Bullock says while he won't interfere with JCMP rules, both groups should be allowed to perform in the A category. The decision as it relates to who go A and F was that of the JCNP, not of myself or the government of the Bahamas. But I do believe that uh, in the long run, we have to look at what's best for Junkanoo. 
and understand that it, the Bahamian people want the best of the form. And, and I mean, if it was my decision and my in my opinion, I believe that uh, both fractions should have been given the opportunity to compete for a prize. That's just my opinion because again, uh, what what there is to gain or what there is to lose. I uh, mean, that that's the question I would ask each and everyone involved in Junkanoo. I think the Bahamian people wants to come out and see Junkanoo at its best. Boleg added he would like to have an open conversation with the JCMP on the matter. And hopefully they will be open to uh, uh, looking at it. But I mean, when individuals invest their money and time uh, to come on to Bay Street, they do that for the reason of wanting to not only have fun, but to compete. And I think that's sometimes how we must look at this. You know, some people say, well, you know, uh, uh, we got to stick to the rules. Yeah, we all got rules, but also the, the, the law of the land always supersedes the rules and regulations of any bylaws and constitution. But at the end of the day, you know, we hope that all of them who have the love and passion for Junkanoo will come together as one and move forward for the greater good of Junkanoo. The culture minister suggested that if the decision to push one of the groups into the fun group stands, it could have a negative impact on the Junkanoo experience and Junkanoo fans will be the ones to lose. At the end of the day, Junkanoo fans will lose when the decision is made. And I think that this is what I'm trying to say to those who are involved in the, in the decision making. We is there for the people and it will backfire. I can assure you that this fraction can cause uh, less um, persons being on Bay Street. And I'm speaking to a few Valley Boys fans who I know very well and say why I'm coming on Bay Street if I can't see my group perform at the best of his ability. And it, it will it will backfire in a, in, a, in a way, I wouldn't say backfire, but I say will it impact in a negative way that when we look at the ticket sales for Junkanoo, that also is the reason why uh, the JCMP could pay their seed funding. If, we, if less people come out on Bay Street because they want to see their group and cannot see a performance of their group at uh, the best of their ability, then, you know, there'll be less revenue. Following two years of tension, a rift emerged in the popular Category A group as one faction called for the group to be registered, have a constitution, and hold elections. Reporting for the Guardian News Network, I'm Vonnie Tude. Hmm. My goodness. Yeah. All right, Laverne. You, I know you and I have a lot to say about this um, off air, but let let's put it out on the on the mics. Yeah. Um, where do you stand now? Same place you were. Yeah, I stand in the same place. Mm -hmm. I believe that we should be allowed to compete in a category. You've given one group um, thirty thousand dollars to compete, and now they have to compete in it. Well, there's not no competition there in that category so are the other fund groups also going to get thirty thousand dollars usually they get two thousand apparently well, well apparently they need they short twenty eight thousand i'm credit. about to start a fun group right now if you're going to get thirty thousand so you so i i i think that i think that both should be allowed to compete in the a category i don't know the reasoning the rhyme or the reason why the jcnp decided to do it the way that they did um they're the governing body but to my mind i i, I we read the I, statement I, from they, yesterday you want me to read it again they they say exactly why they did that why they did it read it again they said uh firstly the jcnp thanks the government of the bahamas mainly the ministry of youth sports and culture that. okay 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 um uh -huh, uh -huh. In boxing day yep 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 yep, 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 yep. in keeping with jcmp's rules and regulations we wish to advise the junk community and the wider public that the valley boys under the chairmanship of mr brian having been duly registered with the jcnp since february 2024 will participate in the upcoming junk parades in the a division the JCMP wishes to further advise that the Valley Boys, the way forward lead by, led by Mr. Trevor Davis, is not a duly registered member of the JCNP. Not a duly registered member of the JCNP. And hence will be invited to participate in the upcoming parades in the F Division. So is it too late for them to be registered? Is it too? I don't know. I'm my producer, he's nodding. So he's saying yes. Why? Is it because it's Why the is deadline it was when? June. Oh boy, the deadline was June. The dead so they went and registered the name mm -hmm. but never registered with the JCNP? Mm, apparently. I need someone who was a part of the Davis led um Valley Boys 
to call in and explain why they neglected to register with the governing body that would have given them that would give them permission to rush on Bay Street in a category. Well, so- I, I don't I don't see if you have the presence of mind to go and register this name. How did you overlook this vital part event? They now have thirty thousand dollars, and they are going to be in the F category. This is an exhibition group. That does not that doesn't make sense to me. And so I still stand by both of them should rush to pay. And you know, people could say, "Well, the rules are the rules," but we also know in the Bahamas we only apply the rules when we feel like the rules should. Mm-hmm. So you know, what are you trying to say favor. there? What, what's that supposed to mean? So just do whatever just you want to do. It. It's because we like people to do this. People are doing whatever. Oh. People are doing whatever they want mm-hmm. to do, right? Mm-hmm. They are doing that. And you know, I'm not a rule breaker, but I'm just saying it's, it's we out the rules when it's convenient for us. So how did we get to this point? How did we get to this point? And then how did the minister and his team make the decision to award both of them 30000 Did they not know? that um, the Davis-led Valley Boys was not registered with the JCNP because I would think that if they were, if they had that information, they would say, well, guys, you know, we understand whatever, whatever, whatever the situation is, but you are not duly registered with your governing body, so therefore we cannot award you seed money. Well, so, right. Now, that's a very interesting point. The, 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 the government really acted too soon, it seems. They should have waited to hear the final word from the JCMP before they made this decision. And um, this is going to backfire on a whole lot of people. But this is what I was saying last week. I think this was already backfired, eh? There was more backfiring to come. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, hmm. let's hear from you folks. The phone lines are ready to lit up. 323 6232. Three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine. Call us toll free two four seven two zero. Tweet us, Facebook us, text us four two two four seven nine six. This uh, let's go to the phone lines. Good morning, caller. On the you're on the air. Good morning, cousin Dwight. Hi, good morning. And good morning, Laverne. Critical thinker. Good morning. I was hoping you would call in. Right, you know that this is there to my heart. There and there to your heart. So please now, I, I will explain what happened was when initially Brian went to the JCNP with his grouping were famous. He found out that the, the Way Forward Valley Boys had somehow captured the name or brought the, 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 the arrest up to date with the Valley Boys. So he ran to the JCNP first to have his groupings registered. Now, the Relief Forward petitioned the JCNP after Brian. See, the, 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 the chairman is not, is not telling the whole story of the JCNP. The, the Relief Forward petitioned the, 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 the JCNP a couple of weeks later, but their application, based on what the chairman said on Red National Radio, he rejected that application because he had already registered the Valley Boys a week or two ago. So it wasn't long after thereafter Brian registered that the way forward attempted to register with all proper NPO and paperwork in hand. That was rejected by the JCNP. It wasn't that the way forward did not petition them. And we petitioned them way prior to the deadline. The decision was taken by the chairman and his groupings not to register them based on of a name infraction of which they don't, do not have no jurisdiction. If you have a fight with a name, that is for the, 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 the company's registration act and the court's or you and the courts to decide. Okay, all this is, this is like cowbells ringing in my head right now. I, I, what, what is happening? This is a lot. Um, is so what, 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 what do you know? Personal. What do you know? Is, what's going to happen now from what do you know? What, what, what is the well, way forward? The, the minister said it. The minister said it, Dion. There are several things Dion could have looked at as the chairman in his groupings. Um, they could have looked at the, the Swell Bay Street, 
because a lot of people would have go down there for that showdown. It's what don't come out. They would have wanted to see that. And now it's going to cause, it's going to backfire because legally, Dwight and Laverne, in the Bahamas, card carrying Bahamians like myself. I'm a card carrying Bahamian. Where do you get that I card from? I just fast watered my birth certificate. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I am a Bahamian. Mm-hmm. And the, the yeah. rules and the regulations of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, you cannot allow, make a law or a policy that allows one Bahamian or grouping to do something that another one cannot do what? in this country. You sure? I think we can. I am positive. That is the preamble. Oh. Freedom of association, freedom mm. of, 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 of movement, freedom of that. That is a national cultural free cultural event. Okay. And all Bahamians and visitors are basically allowed to participate. Mm. I hear you. All right, you we got we got a lot of things that some so Bahamians I, can I do that know. others can't do, though. But for sure. Okay, so let me ask you a question. At this juncture now, do you know what, um, you know, the way? I guess we'll call them the way forward. Um, John Canoe. I, I have a problem with saying if they legally registered as Body Boys, but anyway, um, w- at this point, what is the way forward? Valley Boys going to do? Now that, the, if you know, now that the ruling from the JCN who says that they have to compete in the in the F category. Mm-hmm. So, so you missed our show yesterday. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, um, okay. Okay. I'll read. I'll read the statement they put out um, as well. And uh, did they have the the rally thing they were going to do? They didn't do that last. They were supposed to do something last night, but they didn't. But but this is what they put out after hearing with the JCNP. Um, they, well, they were in shock and not believing that it was authentic. Um, mm-hmm. They thought maybe the, the social media was hacked or something, but they said uh, in their statement, this was signed by Trevor Davis, we are aware of a document allegedly from the JCMP currently circulating on social media. Our chair and vice chair have just spoken with the minister and the matter will be addressed in the morning. That was supposed to be yesterday morning and with the media. Please be assured that the minister is also aware of this issue and is handling it. As he was not consulted on the information that is being disbursed, we encourage everyone to stay the course. As a reminder, by law, the world-famous Valley Boys must change their name, the other guys, and regardless of how things appear right now, we, the Valley Boys Junkanoo group that is legally registered, will be on Bay Street as an A group. Thank you for your continued dedication and support. That was what they issued but, um, on the 10th. Right, so but, they're not going to give up. Issued- but they issued that, and they're saying that the minister, they're in contact with the minister, but based on the interview that the minister gave, is it's, it doesn't seem as if he is involving himself in that aspect. Other than well, he says he wants to meet with the JCMP. Him, he says he wants to meet him, with them. This is what he would do. Right. Yeah, but he did say he wants to meet with them again, the JCN. Yes, they will try to... Sort this out, so but but essence, I think the caller so is right. Since then, we're gonna have two Valley Boys on Bay Street. Okay, then. Yeah, um, I think the caller is right. I mean, this would be the ultimate showdown. I don't think people yeah. will, think people would even stick around for the Saxons. This would be you understand which Valley Boys, there. right? You could make it, you and you could make it whoever whoever wins, whoever has the highest points gets like the name. This, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> but it'd be like the Super Bowl, right? People come out there. You should mm-hmm. really get. To get a halftime show, all right? Get who? Who do you, who do you all want? Listen, to have both of them compete in the A category, you know how many people look. Do I, at this point, I, I'm like trying to see if maybe I could come. You should fly yeah. in. Yeah, this would be. Like, seriously, this mm-hmm. is how invested I am in this. That, that would be big. So, they, maybe the JCMP should consider it. Thing. You could hike up the prices okay. even. No, don't don't do that. Uh, no, no, I you're running out. Now, see, but see, see, but see, but you this could be. The price I'm just saying this is you know. Hmm. We make the hike up the prices. We just had to give an extra thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> right, right, indeed. Uh, let's take some more calls. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Hi. Present day to you both. Um, I would want to um, chide um, your co-host for not listening to the program tomorrow do, um, yesterday. Exactly. And I would do ask, it. I would ask that all Garden um, hosts, participants, tune into Garden Radio and let Garden Radio be their station. Every day. 
Thank you, sir. Yes. I, no, I can't, I, I'm sorry. I can't do it every day. Some days um, I have um, obligations and responsibilities. You need to change your life, Laverne. You need to change your life. Listen to the rebroadcast. I need to oh, and, change and my life. <laughs> okay. And so you'll be well appraised. Um, okay. Now moving right along. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, of course, I'm still um, getting the shock of my stolen um, laptop, but um, now I want to tune into the volleyball situation. I think it's, uh, it's very complicated. I listened in from the very start, and I, I can see that there was a problem with the GSCNP, meaning the group has a problem with the GSCNP as well, and, and that has been revealed. Um, what, I, what I'm looking at also, like your co-host mentioned, um, the fund group gets a certain amount and the A group gets another amount. I think for the A groups, there's a certain number they need to be maybe um, 100 participants or so, um, or, or whatever number it is. So there's apparently there's sufficient numbers for two hundred and one. Pardon? Two hundred and one. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I also see it as a disadvantage to um, the, the Saxons and the other groups that perhaps perhaps should split up as well and get their um, thirty thousand. Um, and, 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 and and so because you, you have, as you said, there will be a super super value volleyball um, event. Mm -hmm. um, on on B boxing. Mm. Oh, and, that's a and nice and name, Valley Bowl. Valley Bowl. That's amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. right. So, <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's it, it, John Cano is is in is some um, in some serious situation right now. When I think we we need to get it totally rectified once and for all, and we need to harmonize um, um, a lot of things, the seed funding and the JCNP, and and we we need to get along. We need to get along. We didn't know any family feud. Need to get along. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Appreciate okay, it. Welcome. Well, Valley Bowl. Mm -hmm. But should the minister, um, should the minister meet with the JCNP? Um, is that and in meeting with them? You know, what is that meeting going to look like if there's a governing body? So, are you going to say change your decision? Like, I, I would think that you should meet with them I and find out who all prepare. will be in the A no. group, who, and then give the seed money. Not, not before, right? I don't, I but don't this, understand how that. This that whole happened. thing, Dwight, has seemed to me, like I said, is out of whack. Like, I don't know. And so you're meeting with them after you've already announced. The minister announced both groups are going to get the thirty thousand. The JCNP says, okay. Um, our decision is only one group is duly registered for for, for whatever reason. Um, but it seems, based on what the caller is saying, the reason their application may have been rejected was because of the name. So and now you're going to go and meet with the JCNP to say what? What is the minister going to say to them now? I'm, I, I, I need to, I, I'm curious to know how exactly what we said this go. morning. You're blowing an opportunity. People will come out in droves. People who haven't been to Junkanoo in years will likely come out to see the Battle of the Valleys. And so we really think you should rethink that and think about the opportunity, how great this will be for Junkanoo going forward. I'm and sure so that's how that conversation will go. Someone, and so then every time someone who, um, a group that has a problem with the decision that the JC, CNP makes, then they'll go to the minister then. How do you know that doesn't happen already? But um, I don't. But um, I really don't. But in this one, hmm. Let's see if we can take these calls really quickly and want to get to some of your text messages. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Stone. How are you? Doing well. Okay, I have a question. I was trying to figure out if I have a company registered with the inline revenue and I have a TIN number, uh, can someone just go to the register general and then say, I want to register that same name that I have registered already. And do, don't when you go into the register general on someone else's behalf, don't they ask you for some type of letter of authorization? I don't or know that, how it works with companies. I don't know how it works with companies. You can junk a new, so okay. that's, that's what oh, happens. It just has to be uh, who, who you know or who you're connected to or who you're related to, and then you just bypass this stuff. That often is a factor in the Bahamas. Yep. I have another question. Uh, he, I keep hearing Mr. Davis talk about this 85%. I understand the original volleyball's back line never left, which is always the biggest section in the group is the back line section. So how did they uh, calculate that 85%? As well as girls are still there, as well as front line members are still there. 
So I still can't understand where he got his 85% number from. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, uh, these are good questions. I guess we'll, and the next we'll question see on the next one. I wanted to know is how did he get the name uh, to receive seed funding without a TIN number? Don't you need a TIN number? The ARC of the MBO states that the, the jungle groups are exempt from the MBO. Meaning you, 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 there was a choice. You could get NPO or have a TIN number that states this in the ARC. So uh, how did he get the name again? These are perfect questions. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. I'm just hearing one side of the story, man. You try to get some, some of the information, because I remember they, they were trying to take the shock the other day. They said they had a 10-year lease, and then the original Valley Boys pulled out a 100-year lease. What's going on in this country, man? Yeah, it's crazy. Now, I hear what you're saying. The um, I know that um, they, they appeared on one sh- one of our shows last week, um, but they were not hearing much from the... Um, Let's see, uh, the, 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 the what, world famous, yeah, the world famous Valley Boys. Not hearing much, you know, we want to hear from everybody, but not hearing very much from them, just a little bit. Right, if, if there's another side, we can only talk about what we have access to, the information that we have access to, if the other side has information that um, dispute what one side is saying, then they should present that information. But you know, but keeping it tight in their community, the, right? Yeah, in the right. jungle community. But I'm just saying, we could only speak about with the information that we have. Yeah. So if you are part of the world famous, I'm trying to get it right, Dwight. Mm-hmm. If, if you are part of the world famous, um, or you their communications officer, huh. director, I don't know how no. that works. <laughs> Perhaps you should. Why are you laughing? Nothing. 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 <clears throat> Right. Yeah. Perhaps you should call in and you know set us straight because we may have some um, wrong information here. So call in and let us know how does this work. Um, you know how how does this happen? What what's going on? One is registered, duly registered and recognized by the JCNP. The other one seems to be uh, registered with who, the Registrar General. Mm. It's crazy. All right, let's take these so calls. Do you have to register with the Registrar General in order to register with the JCNP? No. All right, so um, good morning, Call. You're on the air. Hey, good morning, Dwight. Hi. I'm good. good morning, Lorraine. Good morning. Hey, Dwight and Lorraine. Um, my, 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 my question is, um, to, 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 would they call themselves to the forward and the forward Wally Boys and the backwards Wally Boys. Well, they right? don't like to be called the way. <laughs> they don't like to be called the way forward because they say they are just the Valley Boys. But that's what people are using to differentiate them. The way right, forward is the. Well, that's the, how I have to use one mm-hmm. forward and one backward. Because mm. if if you are one forward, then you need the next one got to be backward. But hey, what 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 the Wally Boys there. need to do right? They need to uh, um you know just change the name because uh, then which one? They, they can't, um, Wally Boy is not Jonkano. Which one should change the name? That's between, so all of them is Wally Boys. They need to come to that, right? Well, they, that's the part. They won't come together for anything. That's they won't come the together for elections. That's they won't come together for all the things they need to do. That's the problem. So at the end of the day, right, um, if they can give the, um, the, the way forward 30000 to be the, the be fun group and then and then give the scrub gang them 200 I mean, if, to that be a scrub group, right? Something had to be wrong with that. And then one, one issue what I had with the minister when he said, you know, um, the, the, the laws of nature override even the Constitution when it comes to the law, right? So what's the point in in, how, in setting up these, these structures to govern and um, by law, right? Right? If, if, if when, when things like this happen, there's really nothing in place to, um, to rectify it through the law, right? Because right now, um, this is just an emotional battle, and there's no law in place to govern this way, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how they can get by it because you see, everything is law, and um, this, this, everything, everything you need law in order to get it right or to get it working properly. It just can't be emotion. And and us, that's what I see the the backward and the forward they 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 just have emotion problem man you know they just need to get with it.
guys. Have a nice day. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's see if we can get these in as well. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on Morning Blend. Good morning, Dwight McBurn. Hi. <clears throat> in reference to this situation, um, the call before the last one was saying something about 10 numbers and something like that. Uh, weren't they not registered before all this debacle happened? Totally getting all this 30 grand a year if they were not registered at all. No, that's what, the question I would like to know. So they were registered with the JCNP? Mm-hmm. Yes. They were registered with JCNP. But you're talking about which, you're talking about the original, the The, the original, the, group. the whole group yeah. as, as an entity. Yes. So, I they mean. They were registered. Uh-huh. Because there was discrepancy saying someone wasn't registered. They had to go run and register this and that. See, some, one, the, the, the way forward group is trying to modernize the, the 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 enterprise, right? So they mm-hmm. want to to register the name. They want to, um, which which wasn't necessarily happening before. Whereas oh. Junko has been kind of casual, it seems, with a lot yeah, of exactly. the groups where that, they that's just register. Figure out. Exactly. Right. So if they, were, if they were all fully registered and up to date with all their billing before all this debacle happened, before the. Uh, Part of the well, it wasn't the like it the was required, but you would think that something as important as the Valley Boys um, would have their name registered so that no one could just take it um, and would have every base covered. And that's what the way forward seems to be trying to do. Whereas exactly. other groups are just trying to be casual and, and have just registered with the JCMP. Man, exactly. and, and that Especially required you have money, to take. And money involved on receiving money yes. from the government and also prizes. So, so you are correct. Like, right? thank you, man. Yeah, so, I mean, again, we hope other groups are paying attention and are not going to allow themselves to be to fall down this type of hole, right? So yeah. go and trademark your name. Go and register as a whatever. you need to do. To Everything you can think name. of. Yeah, copyrights and this. And mm-hmm. Protect your name. Protect yourself. Make sure you registered with whomever you need to be registered with. Yeah. As that, so yeah. that. So not just the JCMP. You don't have this kind mm-hmm. of. I don't know, confusion, debacle that's happening right now. Right. Got to take a break. Uh, good morning, Call. You're, you're on the air. Hello, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi, doing well. Good morning. Good yeah, morning. Uh, Dwight, uh, let me ask a question. How is it that uh, the, the, the world famous Valley Boys could receive seed funding from the government if they're not registered as a, 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 a NGO? How is that possible? Are the other junkin groups registered yes, in NGO? Sir. They are? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Okay. This is the discrepancy that they have it. Mm. And furthermore, if you're an established group like uh, the world-famous Valley Boys, why don't they want to hold an election when a fraction of the uh, uh, 50 or 60% of those wanted a whole election, and this guy, Mr. Andy, doesn't want to hold an election? Why not? You think that you think that's fair for being an organization... And and just one leader uh, until till 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 lifetime is over, can be so the way, mm. okay? It just ain't about uh, anything to do with politics. You know, this got something to do with. Somebody thinks that because uh, their father or their siblings had some input in the group that they owns the group. It doesn't go that way. It's it, it's a team effort that makes up the group, okay? And. If I was the government, I wouldn't give uh, the world famous Wally Boys one dime if they're not registered as an NGO. Because specifically, the team into law, they shouldn't get a dollar if they're not registered as an NGO. Do I? All right. So I, it, it is very confusing. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, somebody's telling me they're registered as a business, but then yeah, the world famous is registered as a business. Who are they okay. registered as a uh, business with? I don't know how this works, but I guess that's why they how have the tin. But they do have the tin okay. number, so. Because they have the TIN number, perhaps that's why that's how they're registered as a business. Okay, I but guess. Do, when you you got to get inline Dwight, revenue here to talk about this. This is I very complicated. That, but Dwight, when you register, uh, they, don't you have to register also with the registrar office? Apparently not. What? You do? I, mean, I, I don't know what's happening. A, I don't know. They have a business I'm license. I'm just saying if they, reg, uh, okay, <laughs> if they have a business license, it's a part of the process to register. You have to when register they, with the When their name office. wasn't registered. Well, uh, okay, God. so how did they get a business license then? I don't know what's happening. My head's hurting. Huh? Okay. All right, we've got to go to the news. Um, we're going to read your text messages after the news. Um, you heard we, we lost Frankie Beverly with Maze, so we're going to yeah. play some of his songs today. We'll be back after the news, folks.
96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. RBC. Life is full of twists, turns, and defining moments that create your own unique story. However your story unfolds, we're here to help guide you through it. From every big decision to every new adventure, RBC. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you. NASA, get ready for a night you simply won't want to miss. For the first time in over 40 years, experience an evening with Eddie Menace live at the Amphitheater Nassau Cruise Port. Come now. Go to ticketboxevents.com or go to the Nassau Cruise Port box office located in the Junkanoo Museum. Joining Eddie on stage, Fran Chung, Gino D, Ira Storm, and the higher level band. An evening with Eddie Menace live at the Amphitheater Nassau Cruise Port. Saturday, October 5th. Get your tickets now. Don't shop at Sherwin Williams then. Don't get the best service in the Bahamas then. The love is really, really strong in Sherwin Williams. We don't just sell paint. We service you with a smile, good heart, mind, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And we love our customers as much as we love ourselves. Yes, for real, real talk. I'm not just saying this real to impress myself. We love to go beyond with customer service. So they feel delighted to come in Sherwin Williams because they know I can either see Dee Dee, I can see Shelly or one of our other wonderful staff members. We treat our customers with the respect of our boss because there are many paint companies they can choose to go to. No, baby. If they go to some other paint companies, so I don't get this little thing at the end of the week. We want to make sure you get that little thing, Shelly. Come visit Shelly and Dee Dee at Sherwin-Williams Bahamas and you'll surely find color in every day. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at Morning Blend 969 or Facebook.com slash Morning Blend 969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 422-4796. Standard text rate supply. And now at 8.25, it's time for another check of your weather for today, brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. Here's what's happening. We've got uh, trapped abundant moisture ahead of a frontal boundary stationed across central Florida. That's going to lead to persistent and occasionally widespread showers across portions of the northern Bahamas throughout the day today as the front gradually lifts northward. A weak high-pressure system across the rest of the country will keep humid conditions and light winds in the forecast through tonight. So as a result of this, the northern and northwest Bahamas will see widespread uh, or widely scattered showers for the majority of the day today into Friday, just before a dry spell for the weekend. And a developing low pressure system may form along the front just north of us by Saturday morning. That's going to increase the risk of rip currents along Atlantic beaches by early next week. Increased rainfall chances will be once again in our forecast of for the beginning of next week as a deepening upper level trough over the eastern Gulf of Mexico will interact with tropical moisture moving in from the Caribbean through to midweek. We've got another heat advisory in effect today, mainly for the central and southeast Bahamas, and there's a high risk of localized flooding due to heavy and prolonged rainfall events for the northern and northwest Bahamas. Your forecast for today for the northern islands, including Grand Bahama, cloudy to overcast, about a 40 to 60% chance of rain today. 
For the rest of the Northwest Bahamas, including New Providence, mostly cloudy, about a chance of showers and isolated thunderstorms. And for the Central and Southeast Bahamas, partly sunny with cloudy intervals. Temperatures today getting up to around 90 Fahrenheit, 32 Celsius, except for the Northern Bahamas, where because of the rain, we might not get into the 90s today. But the heat index will still be a factor for the Central and Southeast Bahamas, making it feel like it's at least 102 Fahrenheit, 39 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 77 Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. In your extended outlook for Friday, partly cloudy to cloudy in the northern and northwest Bahamas, turning partly sunny elsewhere. For Saturday, a mix of sun and clouds. And Sunday, partly sunny for all areas with cloudy intervals in the central and southeast Bahamas. In the tropics, we've got a weak area of low pressure over the central tropical Atlantic. That has a lower 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation through the next seven days. There's another small area of low pressure several hundred miles east of the Leeward Islands. That has a 10% chance for tropical cyclone formation. And then there's a non-tropical area of low pressure that could form along a frontal boundary a few hundred miles off the southeastern U.S. coastline within a few days. This system could have about a 30% chance for tropical cyclone formation through the next seven days. Still watching Tropical Storm Francine impacting the United States. Francine moving further inland over southeastern Louisiana. Heavy rainfall spreading across Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. Again, Francine, no impact uh, to the Bahamas. But that is your morning blend weather check brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. Sherwin-Williams Paints got you covered for all your painting and equipment needs. Visit Sherwin-Williams Paints online or in-store today. And time for another check of your traffic for this morning, brought to you by RBC. Find your loan solution with RBC. A reminder of the work going on on Tony Williams Darling Highway. The paving continues there. The final layer of the painting, of the paving, paving on uh, the stretch between Bahamas Games Boulevard and Blue Hill Road. Uh, it's a single lane traffic during this period. Most of that work between 9.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m., you're asked to avoid the area or follow posted traffic signs if you must be there today. In your real-time traffic right now, mile above the highway, heavy traffic as usual from Bellet Road straight through to the Fire Trail Roundabout and all the way up to Tonic Williams Darling Highway if you're heading northbound. Gladstone Road looking uh, like a much better alternate route for you this morning, but that means the traffic is backed up along John F. Kennedy Drive. Heavy traffic both directions along Lake uh, Westbound near, uh, well, between Harold Road and Prospect Ridge Roundabout and Bahamar Boulevard. You're heading westbound there, so that is um, the situation there. And uh, we're seeing uh, heavy traffic the six-leg roundabout as well, multiple directions, northbound on Milo Butler Highway, eastbound on JFK Drive, and southbound on your Providence Highway. Independence Drive, both directions, heavy traffic between the roundabouts at East Street and Blue Hill Road, east and westbound there. And Blue Hill Road is busy near Carmichael Road, heavy traffic on Carmichael eastbound to Blue Hill Road this morning. And then Eastern, your province, you've got Eastern Road, heavy traffic westbound uh, from San Susi to about Johnson Road, and Prince Charles Drive, especially the major intersections like Beatrice Avenue and Soldier Road heading into Robinson. Very slow-moving traffic there. Soldier backed up heading northbound towards Village, Wolf, and Bernard Road and the intersections there. Marathon also busy for you both directions, north and southbound. Good luck. Morning Blend Traffic Alert brought to you by RBC. Start a conversation at rbc.com slash loan slash all of you. Sunshine and 
We're back with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn along with Laverne Gardner. That song is for the Valley Boys, Joy and Pain. They're experiencing it all. Um, uh, I just want to read uh, the last of your messages here on this before we move on. Um, and the phone lines are lit up as well, boy. Let's read these messages, though. This person says, Laverne, do you agree with this? The Valley Boy story is getting too much airplay. Oh, boy. It's, uh, it shows how twisted we are as a people, though. We need to stick on uh, the real issues, like this Valley Boys route. Wait, so you're saying we should continue to talk about it, even though it's getting too much airplay? Okay. Uh, because it's exposing how messed up some people are, I guess. Is that, that's what you're saying. Okay. This person says here, um, it appears that it was an undermining deed on behalf of the Davis-led group. For the last parades, the leader has been Brian Adderley. What grounds did Davis have to go and register? Seems like he attempted um, a coup here. Well, all right, so we're getting some more insight into this. So apparently you, didn't, you don't need Laverne um, to be an NPO. If you, all you need to do is be registered with the JCNP. So that is not a requirement. Um, and so what this was all about is, is, is quite interesting. Um, uh, this person says here, I don't buy the minister's assertion that uh, fewer people will come to Bay Street because of the Valley Boys split. I think this debacle will to see the spectacle. I know I will be out there to see this clown show on Boxing Day. Hmm. But will the other groups be there? That's the question. Um, Laverne, you're there? I'm here. Okay. Um, let's take this call really quickly. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Clyde and Laverne. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Well, hey, I want to applaud the minister for the decision he has come to in regards to the Wally Boys. At the end of the day, the ministry is the one who issues seed money, not the JCNP. So the JCNP should not have the final say. Uh, also, the I don't know if that's how it works or should sorry. work. I don't know if that's how yeah, it works or should work. And plus... But what some groups have their own sponsors as well. I mean, some some don't have a sponsor and have to rely on the government, but others have their own sponsors. So, and the JCMP. Yeah, yes, 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 they do. But also, that seed money is still a portion that actually helps them in preparation. But also, it's right. If you look at it, if they're going to allow Protocol Sun and also music makers to compete on Bay Street, chances are one or two of them may be disqualified for. Or some function that they, they didn't that, that 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 didn't appear. You have to allow the board Wally boys to appear. Because at the end of the day, people come to see the boat spectators come to see the boat, the greatest show on earth. Okay, so you have to allow both of them to compete. That's what we come for. Let all of them line up and see who wins. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, Chef. Thanks a lot. Thank you for yesterday, by the way. Thank you very much. We appreciated that. Um uh, good morning, call you on the air. Are you there? No, okay, let's read these, and then we got to take a break. And this person says here, do both groups qualify for the funding? Interesting how they could find an additional 30000 uh, for the group, um, but um, just supplies for needy children with that money. Hmm. This person says here, the government is too involved in this junkanoo debacle. The minister needs to stand down. It's looking like interference at this point to lend support to the group led by Trevor Davis. Another text, what is an unfortunate is the ministry trying to thwart the process of the JCNP. The ministry was wrong to gift the way forward seed money at all, certainly not to the tune of 30000 He should have taken advice from the JCNP and uh, placed the way forward in F since JCNP's process is closed. Gift them the seed money of 2000 for the fund category and advise the way forward group to register as a member um, before next season, register with JCMP, they're saying. Hmm. Um, this person says a TIN number is for VAT purposes. If an entity is nonprofit, what is the purpose of the TIN number? Do junk new groups pay taxes? But that the government requires you to have a TIN number for anything they do with you. Everybody must have a TIN number. So it's not just VAT. Um, okay, I'm not going to read that one there. When I keep hearing both sides in the Valley Boys, I keep thinking Trump when he said there were fine people on both sides. Okay, you could have said there were fine people on both sides without bringing up that name. I don't know why you did that. But okay. Um, I believe both groups went to court over this, the name, and they both still ended up on Bay Street. What are you talking about? Oh, they're talking about colors. Talking about colors. 
the same thing happened with colors. They had to go to court. Yeah, it was yeah. one was colors and one was colors entertainment. Mm. Mm-hmm. Boy, was that it? Yeah, I think that's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, colors and colors entertainment. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Wow. Well, what Valley Boys and Valley Boys Entertainment? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Valley Boys Drama Troop. Well, Valley Boys Drama Troop. That would be a good name. Um, they should learn when Genesis left the Valley, um, when the, what? Mm, when the Genesis left, you mean the Saxons, right? Yeah, but anyway, um, they formed their own group. When one family left the Saxons, they formed their own group and moved on. If the Valley Boys need to split, then go your own way, do the same thing, stop the madness. And they did that before with Roots. Um, yeah. This person says here, um... This person says, yes, you have to register as a business with the Registrar General, um, but not necessarily as an NPO. Right, okay. Um, And, um, okay. Some of these can't be read. Um, While listening to the, uh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry we need more regulatory clarity when it comes to public funds. They're giving away money like candy at Christmas. At a Christmas party, yeah, definitely. And the rules need to be obeyed when it's our money, right? We'll take a final call on this, and then we've got to go to the break. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Yeah, Dwight, sorry for calling back on the very end. Um, but, but before I was finished my point, I got cut off. What I was saying, I was agreeing with the minister that no policy made outside of the Constitution of the Bahamas that discriminates from one aiming against the next one should be made to stand. If it's ultra-virus to the contribution of freedom of participation and to participate in Junkanoo as a card-carrying Bahamian, that rule should fall away legally. Obviously, none of the legalese are being adhered to with, with, with this matter. Not, nothing legal is being adhered to. It's all emotional, it's all spiteful, and whatever. That rule that you can't uh, participate because you have a variation of name should fall away according to the Constitution. That policy should fall away. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank all right. You. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to squeeze this in. Good morning, Call. You're on the air. you got about 30 seconds. Hey, good morning, Dwayne. Good morning to your guests. Hi. Um, listen, the gentleman is right. There's a bunch of feelings involved. Because if Phyllis wasn't involved, Davis would have gotten his own name and move on. Okay. The John, the John Canoe Committee, the JCN, has rules. They are they are out of the, 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 the range where they can register to rush in the upcoming parade. Rushing like a like a, a, a fund group does not entitle them to thirty thousand dollars. That is feelings also. The minister is going on feelings and not fair play. Okay, the JCN they put the JCN in charge of that that portion. Mm-hmm. They put the JCN in charge, and so he has to follow the rules of the JCN. The JCN can't tell him what to do with sports. So he, he's going on feelings. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And two very con- very different messages as we go to the break. This person says here, the JCMP is not good for junk canoe. How do you get investors and sponsors to sponsor an organization and tell them to exhibit? Really? It's a lot of tribalism in the J. The other person says here... The way forward, uh, Valley Boys are not registered with the JCMP, and NPO is not a requirement for participating. JCMP is, is the private governing body. They make the rules, and you got to stick to them. Wow. All right, I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot more said on this. Um, uh, this is going to be an interesting few months leading up to the parades. We'll see how this goes, but we got to take a break. When we come back, we're talking prostate cancer and prostate cancer awareness in the Bahamas. Plus, we've got uh, a special announcement to make. You don't want to miss that. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. We've heard him each other. Girl, it's a shame. will find the right loan for all of you with competitive rates and extended terms to suit you. Whether it's for debt consolidation, your next vehicle or home purchase. Sometimes we all know to the reason for the loan. We're here to help you find the solution. RBC. 
RBC has all the loans for all of you. Let's start with a conversation today. Do you know a fisher who braves the seas every day, bringing home a catch that feeds our communities? Nominate them now for the Anchor Awards, a night dedicated to celebrating the unsung heroes of our waters. On November 16th at the Bahama Resort, we're shining a spotlight on those who make waves, both big and small. Visit the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources Facebook page and click on the link provided to submit your nomination. Let's give our fishers the recognition they deserve. Anchor Awards 2024. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the CFAL Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL. Generations of Bahamians. At Wendy's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double, or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Are you ready to be inspired? Get ready for the events of the year. Inspire Her 2024 is back and better than ever. Join us at the luxurious Atlantis Hotel Paradise Island on October 10th for an evening filled with inspiration, empowerment, and connections. Hear from leading women activists, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and more as they share their stories, insights, and wisdom. Get tickets now in the Alive Events app. Corporate packages and vendor opportunities are also available. Inspire Her 2024 Women's Conference, October 10th, you there. Hey guys, this Friday, September 13th, Duncan is celebrating you on Customer Appreciation Day. On this special day, we're honoring our beloved founder, George Myers, in the sweetest way. With every drink purchase, you'll get five free munchkins, George's favorite treat. Thank you for being part of the Duncan family. So mark your calendar for Friday, September 13th. Swing by Duncan and grab your favorite drink and enjoy five free munchkins on us because we appreciate you. Offer valid only on Friday, September 13th. Thank you for choosing Duncan. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. So can't you see? We are back with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio, 96.9. Dwight Strawn, along with Laverne Gardner, changing gears now. It is September, and that means it's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, We've been talking about that quite a bit already, but um, always with us when we talk about this, we have urologist Dr. Gregory Pinto, who's uh, in studio with us this morning. Good morning, sir. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. So we're going to talk about prostate cancer, but you also have a big announcement to make. Um, if you read the National Guardian, you've already you've already seen it. You already know what's happening here. But um, uh, Dr. Pinto, I think we should let the the, the listeners know um, what's going to be coming to Guardian Radio beginning next week. Well, I think it's a long time coming. Uh, I always get a request to be on your show more often, uh, particularly after I've disappeared on the show. It's every single day, ten times a day. When are you going to be on Dwight again? When are you going to be? We really enjoyed the information that you provided. Um, and I think it's about time that I have my own show. Wow. So thanks for the support, Dwight. Uh, I have a newspaper article every Tuesday on the NASA Guardian newspaper um, called The Urologist Speaks. So I'm going to use the same title uh, starting next week, Wednesday, and every single Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the evening. I'm going to have a radio show uh, here on NASA Guardian Radio called The Urologist Speaks, where basically it's going to be providing a community service, speaking about good health. I think that in medicine, good health, you need to have knowledge, you need to have education, and understanding is imperative, and I think we're doing too much in terms of medicine here, and we're being reactionary. We need Mm -hmm. to be more preventative. We need to be more proactive in preventative health, and that's what I want to stress, and obviously, 
early diagnosis is key in terms of any condition, um, particularly in cancer. I'm going to speak, obviously, because it's Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, I'm going to speak about prostate cancer health and prostate cancer, but even combating, in combating uh, non-communicable diseases, which we have a pandemic here, hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, obesity, let's stop it before it happens. Mm -hmm. Let's, at the level of children, let's stop childhood obesity. Uh, I'm, I was very pleased to see the initiative where they're providing healthy breakfasts for public school children. I think we need more of that. I think we need to uh, encourage more activity, uh, sports, etc. But if we can be more proactive, uh, I think that we can prevent us having such an unhealthy nation, mm -hmm. an obese nation. Yeah. Let's prevent us the things that we can do to prevent these from, things from happening. And if they do happen, despite our best efforts, if we can pick it up early, we can provide excellent cure. For example, prostate cancer, we pick it up early, where it's low volume disease, organ confined disease, the survival rate at 10 years is 97%, mm. at five years is 100%. So prostate cancer is a very curable disease. I yeah. think that there's a bis, big miscommunication that that is gonna be the end of you, that has a lot of fear in men um, and, th and throughout the community that if you dig get prostate cancer, end, it's absolutely the opposite. It's a little bump in the road, you don't even need major surgery. If you would want to opt for surgery, it is not even necessary. You can use the little keyhole incisions to do a minimally invasive procedure where you're up and about within a couple hours out of hospital the next day. You can have internal radiation, you can have external radiation, we can heat the cancer, we can freeze the cancer. Mm -hmm. There are many ways that we can give you 100% cure, but the key message is early diagnosis. Right, right. All right, so we'll talk more about the show in a bit. You're not going to be abandoning Morning Blend, right? You uh, of course not. No, occasionally no, come no. on. I would like know. to even actually come more often. Yeah, okay. All right, All right. so we'll talk about that. But but let's uh, let's focus on prostate cancer. Um, we, we were talking with a public awareness group yesterday, and a caller called in, and um, we, the fear is still the thing that's keeping people away from getting tested. Let's talk about that and how irrational that is. Well, we're, we're advocating for tests at the age of 40 and every year after that, at least until the age of 70. We can even extend that to the age of 75. And then those individuals that have longevity in their life or have a very good performance status will even go up into their early 80s. Mm -hmm. But that test is a prostate-specific antigen blood test. Just it, blood. It, That's the we're blood. starting with a blood test, mm -hmm. just for routine screening. We're starting with a blood test. It's not a very sensitive or specific test. It can be false negatives. It can be false positives. It's an enzyme that's produced by the prostate gland, which uh, I won't... Obviously, it's only a gland that men have. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, it's a walnut-sized organ underneath the bladder, just above the rectum, that wraps around your urethra, your pee pipe, that can cause obstructive and irritative urinary symptoms, where all of a sudden, it's inevitable as you get older, Particularly reaching middle age, you're going to have can have that ability to empty their bladder completely. You may be waking up several times in the night to urinate. You notice that if you drink something, you're going to have to go immediately with, within 15 minutes. So almost as if the bladder, the prostate, is controlling your life. Mm. You it goes to the extremes where some men ignore their symptoms for years and they're driving around with a, a cup to urinate into, or oh. they have a bucket at the side of the bed because they can't wake up every hour and and to urinate. Uh, you don't need to live like that with that indignity. Mm -hmm. uh, men who have to change their underwear several times a day because they have overflow urinary incontinence leakage or they have urge incontinence where they just don't make it to the toilet in time or when they walk away from the, the, the toilet because they haven't emptied, they're continuing to leak. Don't live with that indignity. Even women, I always say, don't let the bladder rob you of your happiness and don't let it control your life. There's so many things that can be done in urology to get you back control uh, stop having uh, the, the routine of s not drinking anything after 5 p.m. because you know if you do, you're going to be waking up six, seven, eight times in the night to urinate. And that can affect your, your marriage as well. Obviously, if you're waking up 10 times in the night, you're waking up your spouse 10 times, and that's just going to cause a lot of discord. And it's not just a nuisance. If you're not emptying your bladder, you can have irreversible damage to your, mm -hmm. to your bladder itself. You can have back pressure on your kidneys uh, where you can lead to acute kidney injury and long-standing, even chronic renal failure. I've seen dozens of men who have ignored these symptoms. If you don't want to see a doctor, you don't want to have to be on dialysis three times a week for the rest of your life. That's just going to cause 
a deterioration in the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Okay, so um, you don't want you definitely don't want this. So when do you use the DRE, the digital rectal exam? So you can academically argue it. I mean, when you advocate for routine screening, uh, there's so many things uh, we have at, at our disposal in terms of picking up prostate cancer early. The blood test is, is number one, and there there are even more variations of the PSA. There's we can calculate the PSA velocity, which is a change over time. Uh, but the most important thing you need to understand is that even if we do the digital rectal, and that's going to cause hundreds, thousands of men in this country and throughout the world to not ever seek any prostate cancer screening, even if they've had it once. I've had men say that they'll never go again in this lifetime. And the last time they did was 20 years ago. If we can pick up, if we can do a blood test, there's imaging that is readily available that can pick up prostate cancer even before the digital rectal exam can even uh, pick up any abnormalities. So if you feel something abnormal on the dreaded embarrassing digital rectal exam, that means you have prostate cancer. That's not even necessarily true. It's a very subjective thing. Urologists obviously do it all the time and they're going to be more astute at doing it, but let's say a general practitioner or family practitioner, it's very subjective, um, even in terms of estimating the size of a prostate once it's ab above a certain size. but. If you have chronic inflammation or infection, that can lead to uh, abnormality in terms of digital rectal. Wow. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to pick up prostate cancer when the digital rectal exam complete, feels completely normal. Even when you have a normal PSA, it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean that you don't have prostate cancer. And the, on the other end of the spectrum, if you have an abnormal PSA, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have prostate cancer. PSA is not specific to prostate cancer. It's specific to the prostate gland. So you have a very large prostate, benign disease, benign prostate hyperplasia, that can contribute to your PSA being higher than normal. Mm -hmm. If you have an element of inflammation or infection of your prostate or a urinary tract infection, that can cause your PSA to go up. If you have incomplete bladder emptying, that can cause your PSA to be up. PSA is also age-specific. So the average or quote-unquote normal for a 45-year-old will be lower than that of a 65-year-old. Mm -hmm. So you have to take all of these things uh, and treat indivi every individual as an individual. Every year from the age of 40, you have to at least have that blood test. Can we compare one year with the next? Right. Because even if the value is normal, even if it's age-specific normal, if there's been a jump, big jump from one year to the next, that will cause us to do more specific tests to try to pick up prostate cancer. Because you can have, in maybe 15 20% of prostate cancer cases, you can have a normal PSA and still have prostate cancer. All right, so let's say you've been doing the test every year, almost every year, and it's normal. You're in your late 40s or 50s. Do you ever need to do a DRE? In routine screening, no. No. And uh, protocols are across the world. Obviously, you're going to have those that, say, advocate academically, argue that you might miss 15% of cancers. But if you look at other parameters, such as l looking every single year at PSA, velocity change over time. If you look at, if we can calculate the size of the prostate and, and calculate the PSA density, that takes out the, the, the component of a very large prostate compared to a small. So we can look at, compare the PSA of a man who has a 30 gram prostate, normal gram prostate is 20 to 25, with someone who has a 150 gram prostate. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, the person who has a, a prostate of 150 gram is going to have a, a lot higher PSA than that who has a 30 gram prostate, but if PSA contributed per gram of prostate, PSA density, then that gives us more useful information as well. If your PSA is elevated, if it's between 4 and 10, automatically you'll do a free to, to, to total ratio. That will give us a statistical probability of determining whether it's likely a prostate cancer or not. Mm -hmm. And then we don't just automatically, maybe 20 years ago, anytime you have elevated PSA or jump in PSA, we just biopsy everyone. Mm -hmm. Now with uh, modern advances where we have MRI, multi-parametric MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, which doesn't involve radiation. You just lay in the machine uh, for 30, 40 minutes. That gives us invaluable information in terms of picking up prostate cancer early. So studies have shown that as many as 70% of previous prostate biopsies actually are not necessary if we do an MRI first. So mm -hmm. the gold standard is throughout the world and this cannot be argued, it, it's a, a fact. If you have an elevated PSA, 
We will look to see what are the reasons for that. We're not going to auto automatically jump to do an MRI. We might even repeat the blood tests again. But if we do an MRI, that is imperative before we even consider doing prostate biopsies because we might not necessarily need to put you through doing prostate biopsies. Mm -hmm. But if we do, we can use that information to either cognitive using a, a software where we do fusion biopsies where when we do ultrasound, that's how we do the biopsies, we do system, systematically, we uh, take samplings from certain parts of the prostate to get an accurate uh, representation of the prostate. But we can easily miss a small focus of malignancy. Prostate cancer is also not uniform. You can have an early stage in one part and a higher stage somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You can pick up to some biopsy, the smaller stage, wow. and you're, you're understaging that person, and that's doing a disservice in terms of future management for that patient. So the MRI is important and because it determines whether we need to do the biopsy, and then we can do accurate targeted biopsies to get accurate diagnosis. That's why here in, in this Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, I want to advocate a public private partnership to try to get an MRI machine purchased for Princess Margaret Hospital so that we can have public access for a disease that's taking too many of our our, mm -hmm. our men at the prime of their life. Yeah. One in six men have prostate cancer in their, in, their, in their lifetime. That's considerable. Because we're primarily of African ancestry, we're even going to have a more aggressive form of the disease than our other racial counterparts. Right. We're going to be afflicted with the disease six or seven years earlier than our other racial counterparts. So we need to be very diligent in picking up prostate cancer because, as I mentioned at the onset, the, the cure rate is 100% right. for early organ-confined disease. In fact, we can pick up prostate cancer so early where it's clinically insignificant, such a low volume, that we can actively surveil men for many years before we need to institute any mm -hmm. form of, of cure. But MRI is imperative for so many specialties, it's if you get a stroke, you need to get an MRI. If a neurologist in so many uh, diagnosing, managing so many uh, neurological disorders requires an MRI. Mm -hmm. If you have uh, a traumatic accident where a brain injury or you have a spinal cord injury, we need to have our MRI. And it's a, a, it's a crying shame. Obviously, the government can only do so much. They can't tax us to death. Yeah. But I think if, uh, if we can create a public private partnership, and that's going to be a project of mine, trying to advocate getting an MRI machine for the public use so that we can have parity, so that what we offer in private and what we offer in public in terms of prostate cancer uh, health is going to be on the same level. Yeah. So I'm curious, when with men that you treat who are who, who do have late stage um, prostate cancer, what what are you hearing from them? They never did annual physicals ever, or they just never did the the prostate exams or the PSAs. For most of them, it's that I'd rather die than have that dreaded digital rectal exam. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, uh, but for many of them, they just never had an annual physical. Never. Or maybe they had it 10 years ago or they didn't have any routine bloods for 12, 15 years. They didn't get around to it, but they'll go get their car tuned up two, three times a year, but they don't take care of their own health and they see signs of it. But the most important thing is prostate cancer, early prostate cancer, has little to no signs. So if you're waiting for signs, mm -hmm. you're waiting till it's too late. If you're concerned and you have that fear that because you're waking up so much in the night to pee or if you're weak flow or you know that you're dribbling or stop and start, Statistically, that's related to benign disease, which is an inevitable part of us getting older. 50% of 50-year-olds, 60% of 60-year-olds, and 70% of 70-year-olds wow. are going to have some element of obstructive symptoms in terms of negative symptoms in terms of urinary urgency or frequency. If you're terrified of seeing a physician or urologist because of that, statistically speaking, you have a much greater chance of having benign disease, and there's so many things that we can do, mm -hmm. even in terms of medication, to give you back control of your bladder, to allow you to have a, a peaceful life, and it doesn't affect you socially, professionally, because every 20 minutes you got to go off and, and urinate with urgency. And these men had insurance, or at least access to NHI, right? Well, everybody has access yeah. to NHI, and, so. and even some of them, are, or many of them, had insurance as well. So And, and refused to take annual exams. Exactly that. And I think a motivation will be the most important thing, and that's going to be the first topic of, of uh, the Urologist Speak radio show next week, and that's going to be 
the big thing for men and in this society is erectile function. Mm -hmm. So all you want to advocate, we treat the root cause of the erectile dysfunction. You can always rise again. That's my mantra. Mm -hmm. No matter what, there's first line therapy, there's second line therapy, there's third, there's fourth. No matter what, we can rise again, but we always treat the root cause, whether that's heart, heart disease, low testosterone. It could be an emotional component, it could be a psychological component, but you can always rise again. But in terms of prostate cancer health, NHI is readily available. Automatically, you're going to get a PSA if you have a, a routine blood test, which you get for free every single year. So there's right. absolutely no excuse that men are dying needlessly. And it's a needless death because, as I said, the chance of cure can be 100% if we can pick up disease early. And if one in six of us are being afflicted by prostate cancer, that's considerable. Yeah. Even in the United Kingdom, studies have shown that men of African or Caribbean ancestry, actually it's one in four men are going to get prostate cancer in their lifetime. Yeah. And then if you look at the same stage of a Caucasian male and a man of African ancestry on all parameters in terms of pathology, in terms of the PSA, in terms of imaging, unfortunately the, the black man is going to fare worse. You're going to have a 2.6 times greater chance of dying of prostate cancer if you're a man of African ancestry. So there's no excuse that we don't screen men. There's no excuse that we don't have an MRI machine. I'm going to continue with a pri private par public partnership, and we need to get an MRI machine in our public system. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, there's, and privately, it's easy. In fact, there are four machines on, on New Providence. In fact, there's about to be five. Mm -hmm. So privately, if you have the means... Everyone's going to get an MRI before they consider doing um, prostate biopsies for so many reasons. Yeah. So that we can get an accurate diagnosis. And if we do, and you might not even need a, a biopsy done if the MRI shows that there's no le lesion of any suspicion. Yeah. Um, of course, urology deals with women's issues as well. You mentioned that already. Um, but because it's September, we're talking prostate cancer. Yeah, so that, a lot of men don't even, and women and, and the public as a whole, don't even know what a urologist is. I think over the last seven, eight years, I've been trying to, uh, provide knowledge in regards to what exactly I do. But yes, we deal with men, women, children of equal mm -hmm. numbers and from premature all the way to 100 and whatever. Wow. So uh, there's always a saying that at one stage, everybody needs to see a urologist yeah. for a reason. And unfortunately for many, they just suffer needlessly and in silence and it's it's not necessary. But what I want to use this as is a community platform for medicine to provide uh, useful information um, to pro be more proactive, preventative health, and early diagnosis uh, being the key. But I want to use this platform. Uh, over 25 years, I have an excellent rapport with so many of my uh, medical fraternity. I want to use it uh, to bring on ear, nose, and throat specialists, to bring on oncologists, to bring on obstetrician and gynecologists, to bring on physiotherapists, uh, to, to bring on psychiatrists and psychologists. There's not enough being said about the emotional well-being of mm -hmm. our nation, of our people, the, the mental health, the psychological health. We were a very angry nation. There are oh, too yes. many men sitting up in Fox Hill because in that one moment of anger, they could, couldn't control themselves. You know, I wanted to say something about these men who were afraid to come and get annual physicals and get a prostate exam, but not afraid to go and get a gun to deal with other strange and, things. And not only right? that, they self-medicate. They may be Just, depressed, they may be despondent. So what do they do? They look out for alcohol, which is compounding the problem. They mm. look out for, for drugs, illicit or non-illicit. So it's it's a, a mushrooming problem that's just getting right. out of control. I'm trying to provide a platform to let's address it. Let's improve the, the quality of life of our nation. Let's mm -hmm. improve the longevity in terms of prostate cancer. Let's have every week at least one to two men are dying of prostate cancer. Even myself. Say that again? One to two men in this country are dying of prostate cancer, and it doesn't have to happen. Every Every week. Week? Every single week. Every single week. And it's a crying shame. Men who could have had another 20 years of their golden years to, to enjoy with their, their wife, their grandchildren, see their grandchildren get married, to, mm. to graduate from college. You work so hard to provide for your family. Don't become a burden to your family emotionally, uh, financially, because of prostate cancer, which is so easily yeah. treated. And you said it before in the show that this is the number one cancer in the country. One in six men, yeah. correct. That, that, Higher that, than even breast cancer. Breast cancer is one in eight, one in nine. My goodness. Yes. And it definitely doesn't get the attention um, that it deserves. Well, it, men are, are to blame as well. They don't take uh, responsibility for their own health. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we can have an open forum, and this is going to be a call-in interactive radio show, I'm also... Um, 
pleased and honored to have a uh, veteran news uh, personality, Mr. Julian Reed, to be my co-host. So we, I've been uh, having a good rapport with him, being on the Reed Factor, going back to even to seven years ago, just like I've been on this show over seven years, many, many times, Dwight. Mm -hmm. So I think that we can have an open dialogue. It's going to be a safe environment where mm -hmm. persons can call in and things they're afraid to ask. And what I keep trying to stress is that what you think that you're silent, silently dealing with, probably your cousin's dealing with it, yeah. probably your neighbor's dealing with it, probably your co-worker's dealing with it. And there's no need for any of us to deal needlessly with things that be easily cured. Mm -hmm. All right, we got just a few minutes left. Uh, this person's asking, do you do full physicals um, as well? Or yes, so, yeah, uh, so uh, before, I, before I became a specialist, obviously, uh, I, I, I be, was a, a general practitioner. Yes, so every single day I, I do annual physicals, yes. Okay. So one-stop shop. All right. Um, I want you to do this again, though, for folks. Let, let men out there know how bad it can get so let's, if you have prostate cancer. So the first thing you're going to do, let's, let's use some motivation. Uh, first of all, look at your loved ones. Don't become a burden to them. Prostate cancer is not a quick death. It's a, a death where if you're afraid to see a physician, you're afraid to get a needle stick, if you're afraid, afraid to be in hospital, you're going to be in and out of hospital until you die, and it's not a pleasant death. The first thing we're going to do to try to give you some longevity, to give you palliative years, and because of uh, modern uh, medicine and urology and oncology, we can probably give you 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, even if you have advanced disease, mm -hmm. which is not the same as 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. But yet, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lower your testosterone as low as possible. We're going to okay. starve you of testosterone. So what is that? Wow. Your erections are gone. Your sexual drive is gone. You're going to put on weight. You're going to be in the male version of menopause. You're going to develop, be developing breasts. You're going to have heat intolerance. There's going to be, your quality of life is going to go down. And that's just to give you some years on this earth while you have advanced disease. So why do we, we want to be put in that position where we can give you minimally invasive, almost nearly 100% curative treatment for prostate cancer at a, a very high rate. Your quality of life can be in most cases, the same as before and after the minimally invasive treatment, which doesn't even need necessarily hospitalization, or you can even have outpatient treatments that can cure prostate cancer at 100% rate. Mm -hmm. If you want to maintain your erections, get prostate cancer screening. I think that is the greatest motivation for men where they'd rather lose their hand than lose their ability to perform. That's bad enough, but it can get even worse than what you just said. It can. So you can develop renal failure. You can develop uh, spinal stenosis where basically you're going to die as a paraplegic in a wheelchair. Wow. Where you're going to be on, and the, the issue is that if you have metastatic disease from prostate cancer, you may not even be a candidate of, for renal dialysis. Mm -hmm. So in many cases, you're not even going to die per se of the prostate cancer, but of actually of the renal failure. And that's not a pleasant death. That, no. That's a, a miserable existence. So all the toxins that the kidney is supposed to be flushing out and getting out of your system are just going to overwhelm you. But prostate cancer is very curable. Please at least get a PSA blood test every single year from the age of 40. And every year, there's three years. You, that could be the intervening years where you can develop disease and you can go from being easily cured to just get, uh, receiving palliative care where your erections are gone just to give you that 10 years, hopefully. I don't know what else needs to be said, yeah. right? Um, and yeah, again, you, you probably have insurance, or you ha there is NHI. Exactly there, that. There's, there's no excuse. No excuse. There's absolutely no excuse. Absolutely no excuse. And, and, and one in six men, and then we have all the risk factors for aggressive forms of prostate cancer. Obesity can cause a more aggressive form of the disease. Mm -hmm. High alcohol intake, many studies have shown, can have a, a more aggressive form of prostate cancer. African ancestry, it's a very prejudiced, racist disease, prostate cancer, where black men are afflicted at higher numbers, a more aggressive form of disease is almost a, a different entity. Mm. So because of that, and advancing age, we're blessed to have men living into their 70s, 80s, 90s. Advancing age is also the number one risk factor for prostate cancer. So please, we have every risk factor for not only prostate cancer at a very high rate, at a very high incidence, but a more aggressive form of the disease. If we can pick it up early, the cancer of, of cure is basically 100%. Yeah. 
We had Dr. Stephanie Hutchison on yesterday who started a breast cancer support group and a campaign last year to get people talking about getting screened for breast cancer. And people called into the show, oh, how come nobody's doing this for men? And, and men just sat back and did nothing. But Stephanie started one for men and has launched it, Men in Blue. So I, you, yes, we've talked about this before, that, that often we have to make the appeal to women to get their men to go and get screened. So Dr. Pinto, make that appeal to well, the Well, very show. much so. I mean, for even in my own practice, many times it's the granddaughters, it's the, the wives or all of them who are forcing these men to say, you know what? You, you have to come in, enough's enough. You need to get screened for even, and then I'll, I'll find out that their HbA1c is 15 and they've had symptoms of diabetes probably for five years. Wow. Already done irreversible damage to their internal organs. The erections have, have been something of the past for the last 10 years. They're peeing 10 times in the Nike, keep getting urinary tract infections. Uh, please listen to your body. Uh, and for women, you know what's going on. If you see that, even in terms of depression, in terms of uh, stress, seek help for, for the men in your life because they're, in many cases, are not going to seek help for themselves. Yeah. Well, all right, 30 seconds. Remind folks about next week, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., the urologist speaks. The urologist speaks on uh, NASA Guardian Radio 96.9. It's going to be every single Wednesday starting September 18th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. with my uh, good friend and veteran uh, newscaster and news personality, Mr. Julian Reed. Uh, it's going to be... A very informative show every single week. Uh, we're going to have uh, many um, guests coming in that are going to give us invaluable information to hopefully improve the quality of life. And even if I can save one life or I can improve the quality of life for five people, uh, it's worth the, the effort, the sacrifice to, to, to come on this show. And uh, hopefully I'm looking that we can save hundreds of lives. We can improve the, the lives of thousands of persons. So knowledge is key. Yeah. Proactive medicine, preventative medicine, is just as important as, as early diagnosis, and early diagnosis is uh, fundamental in, in medicine as well. Thank you for doing this. Um, great to have you here as part of the Guardian Radio family. Um, well, you're already part of the family. More than just. <laughs> a, you are here, and we're glad to have you again. That's Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. p.m. right here on Guardian Radio. All right, we are going to take a break for news and be back with Morning Blend Business. Stay with us. Thanks again, Dr. Pinto. Thank you very much for having me here. Views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day.
Good morning and welcome to Morning Blend Business on this Thursday, September 12th, 2024. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn along with Laverne Gardner. And uh, this morning, we are getting a special preview of a new movie that's going to make its debut in just a few called Look Up Child and here um, uh, the powers that be. Behind it, we've got director Leonardo Newman, we've got writer Alexis Burroughs, we've got uh, one of the cast members, actress Raquel Lockhart. Welcome, everybody. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Great to be here. Great to be here. And congratulations on this. Um, this is very exciting. So um, the, the, tell us about the debut, and then we'll talk about the whole process, how this started. But when is this uh, making its, uh, its premiere? Yeah. So Look Up Child premieres at Fusion Superplex on September 18th in the IMAX theater. It's oh, wow, a IMAX. Okay. one night premiere, so red carpet affair, um, so semi-formal, you know, get all dressed up. Um, it's going to be a fun time, so that's September 18th at Fusion Superplex, and tickets are available now at newhillproductions.com forward slash look up child, newhillproductions with an S, dot com forward slash look up child. Oh, this is very exciting. For, for Big those, stuff there. For those day challenge, that's next week, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday it's close. It's <laughs> okay. almost here. Very close. Less than a week away. All right. So, so let's the, take a, get a little closer to the microphone. Sure. If you're doing the red carpet experience, it starts at 6.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have general admission or premium tickets, it's six, it's 8 p.m. Oh, there's an update? Sorry. The If you get a platinum ticket slash VIP there's a cocktail reception that begins at 6.30 p.m. Okay. The red carpet starts from 6.30 p.m., um, but the showtime for the film is actually 8 p.m., so if you don't get platinum, you might want to reach more, like 7, 7.30. Okay. Walk the red carpet. But it sounds you know. like platinum is the one to get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Almost sold out. <laughs> so, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. All right, so this is a big thing. All right, so we'll get back to that in a bit, but let, let's talk about this 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 process. Um, we know that is, uh, I'm sure, in the Bahamas, a challenging thing to, to, to do a film. Um, and um, but, but let's talk about it. Take us back to the very beginning, how this came about. All right, so we were in the mix of this was 2020, and our church decided that they wouldn't have a Christmas production. And for some reason, it was just like, for me, it was just like, oh, what? We need, like, something exciting to end the year, <laughs> at least just because, like, there was so much doom and gloom, you know, the, everyone, everything was pessimism. All you saw was another COVID death. So there was so, so much sadness in the country and the lockdown. So it was like, well, we need something to try to end the year with a little bit of, like, hope. And so we pitched them the idea of doing a movie so that, you know, per se. What's, it, what's your church? Uh, Evangelistic Temple. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they were like, okay, we, we could do it. But then they locked the country down again. And so though we had started the script, um, we didn't get to do it. And so, well, since it wasn't uh, no longer planned, to be, you know, a replacement for a Christmas production or to be in collaboration with the church. It was like, well, we still have this script. Let's finish it off. Let's turn it into a feature film now because originally it was going to be like a shorter film. Wow. Um, so let's turn it into a feature film and let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. And so that's the genesis. And so we just took the rest of 2020 into 2021 or so, just, you know, finishing off the script. And then in 2022, decided to actually go into production on it. So... Wow, that's very exciting. All right, so Alexis, you're the writer. Well, we, we both we wrote, wrote together. together. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, for me, the, the writing process um, happened for me during a very difficult time in my life. Um, so I lost both my parents between um, t- the December of 2021 and May of 2022. Oh. Um, and so a part of the writing process took place um, after we had found out that my mom had cancer. And so if you've watched the trailer of the movie, you get the gist that there is some trauma in, in Jasmine's life, who is the lead character in the film. Uh, and so for me, I think a lot of what I was navigating while I was writing in my personal life kind of bled into some of her character and her responses to things. And so you look at it now, and I think the the, the idea for it as we kind of went through the writing process was, okay, yes, um, we were looking at a very real um, circumstance of events that happened in, in that moment. So obviously Dorian in 2019 
And then the pandemic, the lockdowns and everything that happened in 2020 into 2021. And this idea, like Leo said, you know, you want to be able to to get a message of hope across Um, because a lot of people go through trauma and tragedy and these difficult moments and they, they kind of suffer in silence. And so this is the idea of let's present it in a way that's real, relatable. People can kind of see that and then say, well, at the end of it, because it is it is a faith based movie, the idea that, you know, there's there's a through line of hope throughout the entire film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the, the message ultimately that we wanted to get across was no matter what type of trauma tragedy that you're navigating, um, no matter how much friends or family might not be able to relate or understand, um, there is still hope through the midst of it all. Right. Well, all right. So um, you, you said the, the lead character. So it's not, no, 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 it's but, not but, but no. inspired by, I, by. I think, like I said, we, we watched, um, we screened it last week. Um, and I had a chance to watch it. My wife was there with me and she was like, you realize there's a lot of your personality yeah. and the way Jasmine comes across on screen, mm-hmm. which I, I didn't realize in the moment. And it wasn't really until watching the film. I'm like, yeah, I do kind of like that's the, it, there's some of that. And I think that's just natural when you write that whatever it is that you're going through, you're experiencing as a writer, a lot of times it tends to bleed into what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that was just something that I didn't realize it in the moment until really just seeing the finished product on screen. Mm-hmm. So give us a, a synopsis without giving away too much of, okay. of the story. That's definitely Leo. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I just go with the log line. So after the devastation of Hurricane Dorian, Jasmine struggles to pick up the pieces a fractured relationship with her mom and a slew of bad decisions, however, reliving the tragedy, mentally broken and unable to move forward. Wow. Okay. All right. So this is going to be a story a lot of people can relate to. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think can most I, persons... Can I just say... Oh. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Can I just say, all I saw was the trailer and I, I was like sitting there, I think I watched that like three times. Wow. I was so drawn to it, so intrigued. So I just want to say congratulations and I'm so excited for... For all of you, I, I just kept watching it. I'm like, I need to see this. Yay. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's that's what we want people to get. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, sorry, what else? I forget. No, you were giving us a synopsis. And, um, but like I said, uh, that's a, a very relatable story. It's yeah. Be a lot of I people. think because we all at some point in life, you know, experience some sort of loss or about to experience some kind of loss. And I think. So I think the story is, you know, resonates with anyone who watches the film. Like we had a screening at a f- film festival in the United States. Obviously, it's a Bohemian story. We have like Bohemian themes going on, but yet everyone in the room was able to fully relate to everything that they saw on screen. So I definitely um, think that the story that anyone who watches it, you know, will be able to take the message from it or and be able to enjoy it. Yeah, you've been mentioning Jasmine, played by. Alea Ajigal. And she, she's a part of the Guardian family uh, ah, yes. on one of our shows, the Eye Opener, uh, often on Saturdays. Um, so um, who else is in the cast? We see somebody's here. Raquel <laughs> Lockhart. You, who do you play, Raquel? I have been lucky enough to play the part of Jasmine's mom, Julie. Okay. Um, Alea's mom. <laughs> um, I think for me, um, the part that I play is mostly to highlight the relationship aspect of the movie. Um, we have a struggled relationship, as men- as Leo mentioned. It's mm-hmm. fractured based on the traumas of life, you know. And the part that I play basically is that mom, that typical Bahamian mom who can come off as nosy, intrusive, pushy, just wanting to be a part of your child's life. It's mm-hmm. all out of a you want to just be there for her. You want to be a part of what she has going on. And when you see your child struggling with something, they may not say it, but as a mother, you know, we all have that intuition that says something is wrong. And we will push and we will push and we will push and tell we can get some answers as to what is wrong with our child, what is going on. And that is seen through many scenes in the movie. Um, I won't go into the specifics of what all we are having issues with, but it's all based on that trauma experience and how people also relate to loss and how we move on from loss at different paces. Mm -hmm. Um, I myself also lost my mom this year. And I can say just from that experience alone, looking at all of my relatives, some of us are able to move on a little bit more faster than others in terms of, the emotional breakdown of it and others not so fast, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, all of that is highlighted in the movie, which once again, I think makes it very relatable. Yeah. 
I want to find out more about the process, although I have to say, the number of guests we've had over the past year or so who tell us that the idea they have for whatever they're doing came out of the pandemic. Uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, we we all collectively went through trauma mm-hmm. um, during the pandemic for one reason or another, right? Um, for some people, the, the social um, the actual distancing of, you know, you're not able to go by a friend's house. Sometimes you weren't even able to go by a family member's house. So like, I know for me, a part of the struggle of that journey was, like I said, we found out my mom had cancer and then the country locked down and it was like, oh, you're not supposed to be in a home that you don't live in and all of these sorts of things and all those things come into play. But it's like, okay, so how do we provide support to someone who is going through this? And it, it became such a nightmare to try and navigate. So I think people in a lot of ways had a lot of different experiences where you're not able to be close to people that you used to be able to. You're not able to do the same thing. You couldn't go to the movies. Right. You couldn't do this, that, and the next. And I think that was damaging for people. And then then you have even more profound the loss. So many people had lost family members, lost friends. You know, you have people who lost both of their parents or the whole family throughout throughout that that process. Same thing looking back at Dorian. And I think the idea is when you go through that, it costs you to reevaluate life, right? It's like, what am I doing? Because in any moment we can face a similar situation, whether it's a natural disaster, whether it's some sort of international. So it's like, you know, you look at the time you have left and you realize, I I don't know how much that is. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's probably a part of what drove people to say, you know, this idea, this thing that's been kicking around in my head for us is like this idea of of creating a movie that was originally supposed to be around the idea of of, of Christmas and and that sort of hopeful message, but turning it into something else entirely, but still carrying that through line of hope. It it all kind of ties back to that because it's the idea, like, like Leonardo said, when you see so many people who are struggling so heavily, you just want to get that message of hope across. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, like I said, the, the, the trauma that everybody's gone through, I imagine that's that's what it is. Like you look at life and it's like it's short. Yeah. It's really short. Like it could be you're gone tomorrow short. And so I think that's what drove a lot of people to be like that thing that's been kicking around. Now's the time. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the process like? I'm sure it's not easy making a movie in this town. Um, how, how long did it take when we started filming? And um, and I also want to ask about money. I mean, uh, <laughs> right. tell us about that part too. All right. So we began production in 2022. Um, I sort of have a cheat code because I own a production company. Mm-hmm. Um, so we make commercials. We do all kinds of stuff. And so I have a lot of relationship relationships with persons in the industry. Um, and I just know how to the process of film and that kind of stuff. And this was my second feature film, so it also was in the first time, first one I was doing. And so the process of making a film for me is literally just, okay, I have a script. I want to make this script. All right, let's just go make it now. Wow. And so it was just about, all right, trying to be as prepared in pre-production as possible. So making sure we have our locations, making sure the actors know their lines, um, making sure... Um, you know, that we, I know every single shot for every single scene beforehand so that we can make the best use of time, breaking down the script to figure out how much days of filming we need, because that's the hardest part the, or the most expensive part is how many production days you actually need on set. Because every day is money and you mm. got to feed people, you got to pay people. Right. And so um, just trying to figure that out. Um, and so we originally shot it over 12 days and then everything went <laughs> <laughs> went to chaos and ended up having to film some additional 10 days um, to resolve some technical challenges that mm-hmm. um, we didn't see coming. And so we ended up in 2023. So did you have a, like a real budget or did you just, as you go along? So we had a budget um, out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but we had a lot of, I call it um, a lot of please and thank yous. So, we got a lot of locations for free. Mm. Um, it's amazing how I think I'm pretty sure that was God because I was not expecting all those businesses just to say yes. Uh, I walk into Acropolis and was like, hey, can we film inside your bakery? And they just was like, sure, which wow. day you want to come? That's great. And like Lois printed a whole shirt just to have their name in the film on the person Excellent. while letting us use their uh, store. So it was like, A lot of persons just saying yes, and it's just a matter of just going out there and getting it done, and and then controlling the stuff that you can control. Mm -hmm. Um, That's because a lot of it is, you know, if people have a conversation, then it's like where they having a conversation. All right, if it's in the house, then it's easy to find a house, and then it's just a matter of person schedules and that kinds of 
um, that kind of stuff. Nice. So, but it was a fun process. It was challenging. Um, and making films is a mountain top and a valley all in one because yeah. you could be encouraged one day, you'd be so happy about what you shot. And then when you have to shoot it over, six months later, it's like, I just have to shoot this because we have to shoot it. Right. Not because I really want to. And it's like sometimes like you go there and it's just because it's a real grind. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's fulfilling. The process is really fulfilling. Um, the end product is whatever. Yeah. But the process is really fulfilling. How long was the editing process? Um, so the editing process was about nine months in total um, between editing, sound, product, sound design, um, the film score, because um, we have an original film score. We also have an original song in the film wow. um, composed by a bohemian composer, Stefan Thompson. He's actually doing his PhD in New York right now for film scoring. And so, Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of... Uh, I, I'm so happy with the sound aspect of the film just because from a, uh, we had someone who's really good with sound design, do all of our sound for us, clean up all the dialogue. And so... And then we had staff and do the music. So it was like, I'm really happy without a sound chemo because that was one aspect. I wasn't sure how it was going to come together just because I was like, I don't know if I have to do this. But I was adamant about finding other persons to do that because I don't want to touch sound again <laughs> in my life. <laughs> but that's very exciting. That, that's a lot and great to know that. Wow. All right. So next week, mm -hmm. September 8th. But what? 18th. What did I say? Okay, 18th. Sorry. Um, uh, what happens if you can't make it and you want to see Look Up Child? What, what do you do? I would tell you to try to make it mm -hmm. because as of right now, the premiere um, at Fusion that one night is all we have for mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. There are some conversations taking place. Um, we'll see what happens. But it's really going to be dependent on what the premiere looks like. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you can make it, Try to make it to the premiere. Um, yeah, so okay. That's, All right. That's it. Remind folks how to get tickets. Um, how can, can you can you just walk up? Is is that recommended at all? So tickets can be purchased directly on our website right now, and that's newhillproductions.com forward slash lookupchild. Newhillproductions.com forward slash lookupchild. Um, tickets can be purchased there right now. R currently, if we if the Premiere was today, you could just walk up mm -hmm. and buy a ticket. But I can't make a promise for next week because if all the tickets are sold online before the premiere, then they're gone. Right. So mm -hmm. I would urge you to get it online. We all know Bohemians like to purchase at the last minute because there are tons of families of cast members and things like that that are just waiting until like literally the week of. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't advise. Them. I wouldn't advise <laughs> you waiting. <laughs> um, but you know, we have a, it's a large theater, so mm -hmm. there might be a few slots available when you when you get there. Uh, and so, but yeah, how big is the cast? The cast is about well, cast and crew together is about thirty persons. Okay. The cast yeah. is about twelve actual people, and then we had some voiceover talents, um, and then we have um, the person who's performed our song, Danielle Dean. And so, yeah, but it was about thirty persons that worked on the movie overall. Yeah. All right, and again, um, ticket prices. How much are the tickets? So we have three tiers of tickets. Um, is a hundred and so cocktail reception, hors d'oeuvres, um, you know, walk the red carpet, all that beautiful stuff. Our second tier is premium, and that's the best seats in the house. So making sure you know you get the best position to see the screen, and mm -hmm. that's sixty five. And then we have our general admission, which is just the rest of the seating, and those are fifty, and all those prices are flat as to be out of all of those prices. Oh, so, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so are we looking at other collaborations in the future? Are you working on something now? We definitely are working on new movies. Um, we are in the writing process of our next film. I may share a little bit more about it on the night of the premiere. Okay. Um, because we are trying out the script finish before the year is out so mm -hmm. that we can go into production next year. But we are, we, like, my goal is to make as much films as possible, as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. um, because I really want to see um, Bohemian Cinema um, revolutionized and actually become a real industry that's also sustainable. And so that's my goal. Um, so this is not the last f film, and uh, this is surely just another step in making that 
a reality. Yeah. Well, and if people are listening and they want to act and they want to be part of the crew, they also studied mm-hmm. something that nobody else knows here. How do they, how do they get in contact with you? All? So they can send us an email um, at info at newhillproductions.com um, or go on our website, newhillproductions.com and just hit the contact button and just say, hey, I'm an actress or actor and leave your demo reel. I promise we do see them and we actually do contact people after seeing them. Um, so that's how some persons actually got a part of this. So definitely, definitely don't be afraid to reach out. Persons in the film industry over here are very kind mm-hmm. um, for the most part and most people like will just give you information for free as well. So, so like, it's a really cool um, community right now. And so just reach out. Don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to message again just because when you might have messaged, a project might have not been in its, you know, in production yet. And then three months later, it went in production, but the person forgot about you by then. So mm. don't be afraid to keep messaging. Um, yeah, I actually had someone message me who was a part of Look Up Child, and they were like, hey, Leo, just letting you know, I want to be a part of the next movie, too. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank and you, Sid, next record. Raquel, you're going to be doing the next one? Well, I did the first one with him. This is my second movie. Oh, video. so you're, you're regular. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see what happens. But it's the third time around. Excellent. Excellent. Mm-hmm. One more time that people know about next week, Wednesday. Yeah, so Look Up Child. Um, it's a feature film. It's about a fractured relationship between a mother and a daughter. It's about loss. It's about people suffering in silence. And it's, you know, really written just to give persons a message of hope um, that pain is not useless and that it is purposed by God for a real reason. And so um, the premiere is at Fusion Superplex on September 18th at, in the IMAX theater. And you can get tickets at newhillproductions.com forward slash look up child. Okay. Excellent. Um, and they can see the trailer there. The, ticket, there, right? uh, the trailer is also yeah. on newhillproductions.com forward slash look up child. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's everywhere at this point. Um, I think it has like must be 200,000 views or something. So, yeah, Yeah. definitely go check out the trailer. Congratulations. Thank Um, you. This is great stuff. Looking forward to seeing the movie. And again, it's Look Up Child. I'm Leonardo Newman, Alexis Burroughs, Raquel Lockhart. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Dwight. We do appreciate it. Uh, We're going to take a break and then be back with the final few minutes of Morning Blend Business on this Thursday here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Stay with us. Ready to save? You can put $100 into the CFAL Savings Express Plan and make sure your money keeps growing. Earn interest on your savings while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. You try to rest. Located the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 3022361. Back to school is around the corner. Move to the top of the class with this amazing Scotiabank back to school credit card offer. You could win your share of prize money valuing $10,000 when you spend $150 or more on any Scotiabank credit card to purchase books, uniforms, technology items, or other academic items. Ten lucky customers will each win $2,000 in cash back towards their purchases. Promotion runs July 12th through September 30th, 2024. Drawing date is Friday, October 11th, 2024. When you jump in your Japanese import and you turn the radio on, all you hear is... Remember, the hit spot will install a band extender in your Japanese import for the discounted rate of only $79.99, bad included. Get your band expander installed today at the hit spot and listen to Star 106.5. Plus, get fresh news and smart talk on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. 
Back to School is around the corner. Move to the top of the class with this amazing Scotiabank Back to School credit card offer. You could win your share of prize money valuing $10,000 when you spend $150 or more on any Scotiabank credit card to purchase books, uniforms, technology items, or other academic items. Ten lucky customers will each win $2,000 in cash back towards their purchases. Promotion runs July 12th through September 30th, 2024. Drawing date is Friday, October 11th, 2024. 24. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at Seafeld, your interest is our interest. Visit Seafeld.com to start now. Seafeld, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. It is time for your morning business report brought to you by CFAL. Walker's Key is set to do a style casino as the Walker's Key Development Corporation, led by Carl Allen, continues the development of the island. Prime Minister Philip Davis making that announcement during the signing of a heads of agreement related to the redevelopment of the key. According to the Prime Minister, the casino plan for Walker's Key will have seating capacity of 150 people. Walker's Key began the first part of the development just before the pandemic and has begun hosting some of the largest fishing tournaments in the country. The Parmesan says the further redevelopment of Walker's Key will continue to breathe new life into the Abacos. Campaign finance reform and freedom of information are crucial for Bahamians, according to Executive Director of the Organization for Responsible Governance, Matt Aubrey. Aubrey telling Guardian Business yesterday, in response to comments made by Prime Minister Davis, this week in which he told reporters campaign finance legislation was not a priority for the government. Well, Aubrey says that campaign finance and freedom of information are crucial, particularly, quote, how they impact people's day-to-day lives. They bring a level of transparency. They bring an accountability. They reassure folks that their interests are reflected in the selection and support of who ends up getting into power. Can read more about his comments in today's Guardian Business section. Overseas, Campbell is ready to drop the soup, at least from its official name, Campbell Soup Company, announcing its intention to change its name at an annual meeting of investors Tuesday. The 155-year-old food seller, which is most famous for its namesake canned soup, says it will now just be known as Campbell's Company. CEO Mark Klaus saying in a statement that this subtle yet important change will retain the company's iconic name while better reflecting the full breadth of their portfolio. Campbell hasn't been exclusive to the soup business for some time. The company also owns brands like Prego Sauce, Goldfish Crackers, and it completed a $2.7 billion acquisition of Sovos Brands, the maker of Rayo Pasta sauces, earlier this year. From the U.S., wholesale price exploded last month, the latest evidence that inflation pressures are cooling enough for the Federal Reserve to begin cutting interest rates next week. The Labor Department saying today that its producer price index, which tracks inflation before it reaches consumers, rose 0.2% from July to August. That was up from an unchanged reading a month earlier. But measured from a year ago, prices were just up 1.7% in August, the smallest such rise since February, and down from a 2.1% annual increase in July. Excluding food and energy prices, which tend to fluctuate from month to month, 
So-called core wholesale prices moved up 0.3% from July and have risen 2.3% from August 2023. Taken as a whole, last month's wholesale price figures suggest that inflation is moving back towards the Fed's 2% target level after peaking at a four-decade high in mid-2022. The prices of gas, groceries, and autos are either falling or rising at a slower pre-pandemic rate. And American companies in China are seeing low, record low profits with businesses, business confidence at an all-time low amid U.S.-China tensions and a slowing Chinese economy. According to a report published today by a U.S. business group, out of 306 companies polled, a record low 66% were profitable back in 2023, according to China's business report published by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. The report also found that only 47% of respondents were optimistic about their business outlook in China over the next five years, the lowest in the survey's history of more than two decades. Beijing and Washington have been at odds in recent years over issues like trade and manufacturing, as well as China's claims over the South China Sea. China is also grappling with a low domestic economy, a slowing domestic economy, with lackluster, lackluster consumer demand and deflationary pressures persisting even post geopolitical tensions between both countries at the top challenge, listed the top challenge to business operations in China, according to that report. Closer to home in your market watch, recapping trading on the basics from Wednesday, your market movers, Bahamas Property Fund, moving 20,750 shares, closing at 960, up 10 cents. CIBC First Caribbean Bank, moving 6,218 shares, closing unchanged at 1450. Doctors Hospital, moving 9,675, up 5 cents to $10.10. Focal, moving 19,518, up 5 cents to 542. Finco moving 7,950, down 5 cents to 1445. Consolidated Water down 11 cents, closing at $5. Emira Incorporated up 10 cents, closing at 926. The Bissex All Share Index closing at 2,953.52, up 0.14. That's your Market Watch. And that is your morning business report brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. And tune in to CFAL Talk. Mondays at 6.30 p.m. right here on Guardian Radio. Their new season kicks off Monday coming. And we are back with Morning Blend Business here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, along with Laverne Gardner, our final couple minutes here. Laverne. Yeah. So before we were talking about uh, talking with Dr. Gregory Pinto about his new show, The mm-hmm. Urologist Speaks, and talking about prostate cancer. And I just want to read this message we got. And we've got a serious mm. problem here. We've got a serious problem. And again, I don't think these are always the same people texting. So it's a number of people. And I don't know how we got like this. And I don't know. Anyway, so we said it, right? You've got insurance. You've got NHI. You really don't have any excuse right. to have an annual exam. And that it will be included, and that's not going to be a charge to you for that, that PSA blood test, right? Every year, just 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 get the annual, get the physical, do it. Um, so the texture says, Dwight, how can you expect men to come forward with their issues when they know women receive the funding and the attention? Well, what does that mean? Actually, respond. We're not supposed to respond to on the text line. Not supposed to. But I said I had to say something. I said that's dumb because it really is dumb. What What do you What do you mean? And they when they, they respond to me, um, you can't expect men to come forward when the government and the private sector prioritizes women. But kudos to Dr. Pinto. 
and they respond to me, what's dumb is the decision for the Small Business Development Center, why not how they get this, to distribute $650,000 in funding to 83 women. That's the most, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, okay, well, uh, so I think that's the same person could that be. texted the other day. Could be. Clearly. But uh, I don't think there's only one man who was upset about that. No. But, no. but you did um, respond. Um, yes. You, they, 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 uh, yes. Starting a men's program. But again, all their programs are for men. Um, all of the programs, right. Are for everyone, for everyone. The info, yeah, it's for everyone. But based on their data, more women were not aware or felt like maybe they could not receive funding. Yeah. However, they also um, have an initiative going to be, if it hasn't been launched already, exclusively for men. But this is the thing. So you don't um, have your opportunity. Somebody said uh, something then, about this. Now let's go back. Mm -hmm. Let's now go back to this text about today. Here is Dr. Pinto pleading and saying, as he has done on more than one occasion, men, you need to get tested. You need to come in. You need to do what you need to do. Yeah. He even spoke about a lady who had started a support group for women with breast cancer, no, no, men no, no, complain. No, no. Yeah, that was, that was she was on our show. And she she formed right. this group because of her experience on Morning Blend last year. Because men okay. were like, well, no one's checking for us. And we were like, well, why don't you start something? And, okay. and yet no one did it. And she still went and did it for men. Because men can't help themselves. And you want to blame everybody else who decides that, well, I need this to help my, my particular group. This is very silly, guys. we got to grow up. This doesn't make sense. I think that this texter, what they should do, if they really feel that this is uh, such a great disparity, that they should go ahead and begin to create an organization that is supportive and helpful yeah. for men because there are men who have issues. There are men who need to be in a brotherhood where they can share their experiences, where they can get support, where they can get the but the um, information that they need to help themselves. So I'm suggesting that this texture join up with the other texts. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to meet, but they come together and they form yeah. an organization and we'd be more than happy to support. Absolutely. It makes no sense to get angry with the number of walks for breast cancer and say, well, they don't walk for, med for, med for prostate cancer. That doesn't so make any sense. So you go ahead and Start do it. that. You started. Right. You started. You started. And we will help you. Right? Come to Garden Radio. We recognize the race. We know everybody who's involved in that space. Um, but do it. If you feel that there needs to be one, I don't know, you're expecting us to do it. I guess that's what it is. Because you don't think you can do something on your own. Those women are not waiting around for somebody to do something for them. They're doing it. They're doing it. What is your problem? Get up and do it. You feel no one's checking for me? Get up and do it. What am I missing? And isn't there an organization anyway? I think it's called Me Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they okay. are, they're mm, okay. sadly a little quiet, but but they still exist. Yes, yes, absolutely. And again, there's now Men in Blue as well, so um, formed by a woman. But yes, um, to help men with prostate cancer, uh -huh. because men, anyway. But hey, Laverne Gardner, thank you so much for being here this morning. Always a pleasure. I'll talk with you again next week. And I'll be back tomorrow morning with more Morning Blend. It's not today, it's Thursday. Yeah, so tomorrow, Friday, um, more Morning Blend and Morning Blend business here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Everybody have a great one. Stay tuned. Aaron Green, on the clock, next. Radio 96.9 FM.